points on this. Uh, you know, firstly, our thought is that redevelopment in Mumbai is actually a very good thing, both for the city's overall development as well as for the residents of slums. It's, I think, quite unfortunate that more than 50% of Bombay's residents live in slums. And I think providing them modern, updated accommodation on the sites where they're currently living has a strong purpose behind it. Secondly, we think this is a very large opportunity because there are, of course, a lot of good quality land parcels that are available through redevelopment that are not available in these parts of the city through any other means because they're not remaining open land parcels. Thirdly, we thought that the partnership with DB Realty allowed both parties to bring complementary skills to the table. So DB Realty does have a lot of experience with slum clearances, being able mm. to get sites ready for development. And of course, our expertise would come in in handling large scale developments of this type. So we thought all of those reasons made this uh, a strategic fit. In terms of the structure, our, our thinking originally was that through the partnership that DB Realty will have with Godrich Properties on the operating project level, and given its existing partnership with another large developer, we did believe these, these uh, operating partnerships were going to unlock value in DB Realty's listed entity. And we felt by structuring the investment in a manner that Godrich Properties mm. shareholders could participate in that upside, that was getting unlocked through Godrich Properties project level performance um, was we thought an appropriate structure that actually allowed uh, GPL shareholders to benefit both from the project level as well as the, the entity level. So that was, I think, the combined thinking that uh, led us to initially approve this investment. I think what changed was the feedback we received from our broader stakeholders. Of course, while we had consulted um, internally within the team and with our board, due to the price sensitive nature of this information, there was no possibility of consultations with wider stakeholders prior to the announcement this week. So once we were able to do that, it was very clear that uh, stakeholders, including our minority investors, were not comfortable with the decision. And I think pointed both to problems inherent with slum redevelopment from a risk perspective, uh, particularly that these projects can often get delayed. They were also not comfortable with the structure of investment. And I think while of course, you know, it's a little embarrassing for us to reverse ourselves publicly like this in a 24 hour period. At the same time, I think good governance also involves being flexible being serious about taking aboard the viewpoints of all stakeholders. And if in the broader judgment of uh, you know, several, uh, several stakeholders that we consider very important, we've made a mistake in this case, we're happy to take that as a learning, happy to reverse course um, and not you know, be stubborn and push through our decision over the objections of, of minority investors. So I think that's really what happened. We, we continue to think the financial logic of the transaction was quite solid, but we understand, and it's not that we hadn't thought of before, that the risks in redevelopment are quite uh, significant. And we do think that if our broader stakeholders are not comfortable with the, with the risks, that the right thing to do is take on board their feedback and correct course as we have done in this case. Course correction, 